At this point, we have what is roughly a custom router, but we're still technically using this http.handlefunk, and behind the scenes, this is actually using the default servmux, so we're still using that servmux type that is part of the standard library. And there's nothing wrong with that necessarily, but I did want to talk a little bit about if we didn't want to have to use this, and if instead we wanted to just pass our router into the http.listen and serve, how might that work? So to start, what we would probably try is something like passing path handler in here. And we can get rid of these lines and just say, we're going to start the server, we're going to pass this in as our, as our router that's going to handle everything and tell it where to go. Well, you'll see here that this doesn't work. And it's saying that it can't use it because path handler is a function, whereas it's expecting an HTTP.handler value. So what I want to do in this lesson, and in the next couple lessons, is look at a couple different types in the standard library, um, the HTTP package. And we're going to look at what we might have to do to make this work. And we're going to look at the different types that are available to us. And we're also going to look at how um, the HTTP package does a few things behind the scenes that caused this path handler to work the way we were previously previously using it and how we can sort of replicate that behavior if we want to. So I do want to warn you before we dive into all of this is that because we're looking at the Go source code and we're seeing how things work, there might be times where it's hard to follow, especially because the Go source code wasn't necessarily designed as something to be used in a course that's teaching web dev from the ground up. But I still want to show you how it works because I think that over time, as you start to use these things, you'll start to think back to this video or this lesson or the next couple lessons, and you'll think, oh, now that makes more sense to me. It's all starting to click together. So don't get worried about understanding this all perfectly right now. Um, you should sort of hopefully get some stuff at a high level, but you don't necessarily have to comprehend all the code perfectly. The main goal here is just to show you how it works. And then as we start to use the things, hopefully those two different approaches of viewing it will help make it um, sink in a little bit better. So I'm going to start by looking at the source code for listen and serve. So I showed you before you can right click and go to definition. Um, what I'm going to be doing is using the shortcut for that. It's the same thing. It's just I have a keyboard shortcut set up for it. And when I look at listen and serve, you'll see here that this expects an HTTP.handler. It doesn't have the HTTP prefix because this code is currently inside of the HTTP package because it's part of the standard library, but it wants an HTTP handler. Well, what is that type? If we dive to that source code um, and see what that type is, we'll see that that type is an interface that has a serve HTTP method that takes a response writer and a request. Well, this looks pretty familiar. Um, if you recall correctly, we have been writing functions that take in a response writer and a request. So why isn't our code working in this particular case? Or why is this different thing here? Why doesn't it just take a function that looks like this rather than this interface that looks like this. So this is, I suppose, just a design decision on the Go team's part. They technically could have made this work with the function, and as we will see later, you can kind of convert back and forth between the two. So they could have made either one work, but for whatever reason, they decided to go with this interface type, and that's kind of the primary type used within the HTTP package. And the reason that we can use these functions is because behind the scenes, they actually get converted into handlers at some point. So they actually get converted into this handler type at some point. And it's not gonna be in this video, but we are going to see in another video how that happens and get you a better feel for what is going on so that we can do something similar if we want to. Okay, so we have that handler type. Let's, let's not worry about converting this right now. Let's just say we wanted to implement that interface. How would we go about doing that? Well, the way we would do that is we could create a type. Let's call it router. And if we needed any fields or anything in here, we would do that. But for now, I'm just going to leave this empty because we're just going to hard code our routing. And then we're going to add a function to it. And this is going to be serve HTTP. And it's going to have the response writer and the request as arguments. And you'll see here that I've got two things named R. So in this case, I'm going to name this one router because I think it's important to be consistent with all of our serve HTTP and any uh, HTTP handlers, and it's very common for them to be W and R. So I think for you know for simplicity and to sort of keep things consistent, I'm going to make sure that I use my uh, router as the name for the router variable here. 
So inside of this code, we can actually access router, W, and R. Um, so we can access all three of those. We don't actually need router, so technically I could actually go like this and get rid of that variable altogether, but I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so inside of here, we need code that routes our code and sends it to the correct handlers. Well, we actually saw how to do that already up here, so I can just take all of this code, copy it, paste it in here, and then at this point, I can comment out the path handler. I don't actually need it. So at this point, we've created a pretty crude router in the sense that it's it's static. Um, we can't dynamically add routes to it or anything like that. It's just, it's, or it's constant, not static. Um, so it's going to be something that we can't really change, but it should work if we plug it into our code here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say var router router, and then I'm going to pass the router in here to listen and serve. So if all went according to plan, we should now have a router and it should work um, for you know, all of our web requests. So let's go ahead and give that a go. Let's go run. Then let's come back here. And I was looking at a different lesson, so that's not going to work. Um, slash dogcat gives us page not found. If we go to the home page, it says, welcome to my awesome site. If we go to contact, it gives us a contact page. So it looks that our code is working exactly as it was before, except it's using this router type. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want this router type rather than a function like we had before? What is the benefit for this struct type? Well, I think one of the main reasons for this is that it's very common to need different information. For instance, you might have something like a type server, and it might have something like a database, some, you know, some sort of database. And I'm going to put string here, but realistically, um, this would be something like a SQL to DB connection. So something from the SQL package, and it would be there. So like now when we wrote serve HTTP or any functions like this, we could either pass in the database connection to them if we wanted to, or we could make those methods on the server type. So we could have something like func s server, and this could be home handler, and then this would be exactly the same, but from here we could actually access s.db, and we can make database requests and do things like that. Again, I'm jumping pretty quickly ahead, but I just wanted to give you a quick example. The main benefit of having this struct type here, and then adding methods to it, is that we have access to different fields that get set on it. And inside of these handler functions, we can access them while still having a function that matches this definition here. So we're not doing that yet. We will do this stuff later in the course, but it's worth just keeping in mind that there are definitely benefits to it down the road that we can take advantage of. The other advantage to having a type, because you might be looking at that database connection and thinking, well, can't we just use a global variable, something like rdb sql.db, and now we have access to it, we can just use that inside of here. Um, one of the main reasons, for, there's a bunch of reasons why global variables can be bad depending on what you're doing, but one of the main reasons why we don't want to do that is that it would limit what we can do in a lot of ways. For instance, if we wanted to start up four different servers, all with different database connections, I have an alarm, sorry. Um, if we wanted to start up uh, multiple servers with different database connections so we can run multiple tests at the same time, well then, that wouldn't work with a global variable necessarily, it's at least if all the code's running inside of one you know, test program. But if we designed it correctly, we could actually set up multiple servers and test them all simultaneously within the same test run. So there are definitely some advantages to that. And throughout this course, we'll start to see some of them. But for now, just keep in mind that uh, this handler type just needs a method serve HTTP, and that's what allows us to implement the handler interface. Now, you're probably asking, do I have to create this type all the time? And I kind of alluded to this before, I think I flat out said it, but there actually is a way of converting things like contact handler and path handler into an HTTP.handler interface. And that sounds a little bit weird, but if we go back to the handler interface and look at it, because this function is exactly the same definition, we can actually convert the two back and forth. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at the http.handlerfunc type, which is going to be what allows us to do this. And then 
After we see what the handler funk is in the next lesson, the following lesson after that is going to focus a little bit more on diving into the standard library source code to see how that conversion actually happens and, and actually see a couple places where it, where it takes place.